All right, well, good morning, New Life family. Uh, it's me, Danny Moore, our Worship Arts Director uh, with Pam Capes here out in our new garage uh, that we have been slowly building throughout the summer season. And here coming into the fall, we're going to really try to get it wrapped up. If anybody's interested in helping out October 1st, we're going to have a big work day. We're going to get the roof on here and finish up some odds and ends uh, around everything. So if you got a hammer or a drill, let me know. <laughs> you can contact me through the office, and we'd love to have you out here to be a part of that. Um, or if you just want to bring your lawn, lawn chair and uh, armchair quarterback from, from the pavement, that's, <laughs> that's okay, too. We'll have a good day. Uh, so, Pam, we're here to talk about this last Sunday, and I want to know what stood out to you as, we, as Pastor Eric dove through his message. Let me pull out my little notes. Okay. Um, so, the whole week last week... Um, the, I think it's a Stephen Curtis Chapman song, the whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Okay. You know, yeah. whatever. And so um, that just kept resonating as Everything he was. Everything you do to the glory the of the one, one who made you. you. Okay, yes. there it is. I, was trying, I used to know that song. Yeah, that's yep. it. <laughs> and so that has just been in my spirit all week. And then uh, the, with the reading, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it just kept coming back. I was like, okay. I'm, I'm hearing this. This is making sense. So that was kind of the overriding theme for me um, as uh, Pastor Eric was, was preaching. And um, he also, when he was talking, I also thought how Psychology 101, you know, Psych 101 just kind of disappears in the uh, culture nowadays yeah. when he was talking about how you know, there are things that you might say that I would disagree with and vice mm -hmm. versa. And in this season, um, then I don't talk to you anymore because you right. and I are not on the same page. We're not identical twins and therefore mm -hmm. we cannot get along anymore. And, and what shocks me so much is Psych 101, that's like, that's the definition of anarchy. If mm. you are always doing what's good for you and I'm always doing what's good for me, mm -hmm. it's uh, not only is it countercultural and, and anti-community, but as a Christian, it is anti-unity. Yeah. We're supposed to be one, and, and all of the things that we see in the world right now should pass away, and we'll know mm -hmm. they'll pass away. Right. And the, the scripture is standing true and telling us to be submitting to one another. So it, it, that whole thing, I was just like, that's just the definition of anarchy, if you want to look at it from a secular perspective. And then from a Christian perspective, it's, that is the antithesis of what we should be doing yeah. with one another. Mm -hmm. And so I like the way that he um, talked about uh, submitting and obeying in order yeah. to support the weakest member of your, the weakest link, mm -hmm. and um, that s spiritual maturity is uh, when you come out of the law into the grace of mm -hmm. love and gospel, which I thought was, was awesome. Yeah. So. We can get so fixated on drawing the boundary lines of what's good and what's bad, what's right and what's wrong, that we miss out on the grace of the the acceptance of you know what these are the rules and we're all going to try to keep the rules but if one of us makes a mistake or gets lost in the weeds or you know whatever you know there should be grace right. to get out of that to to find our way back onto it so yeah no i think that's great and even the people that aren't within uh you know, that are not yet members of the family. They yeah. haven't quite gotten their, the, new, the good news yet. Mm -hmm. um, that passage, and it might be in Peter, first or second Peter, where it talks about talking to unbelievers with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm. and, and in my, um, probably the last five or six years, I'm almost like those should be in caps because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't want to share the good news like a fire hose to the face. We want to share good news with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Mitch's sermon um, was really, at least it hit me, that mm -hmm. the uh, unbel it's much easier for the unbeliever, as it's common sense, to see your actions mm -hmm. and recognize that they want to act like that and yeah. that your that truth is being carried out in the way you live your life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you love them up with gentleness and respect. Yes. So. No, oh, that's great. 
Yeah. So where was a moment in here, you talked about how Eric drew a pretty good line between, you know, law and, and gospel. And where, where was something in this, in this talk or in this scripture that you really felt the law, the Holy Spirit kind of convicting you of, of something? Um, at right from the, right from the get go. Yeah. That it, just because it's lawful. Yeah. Does not mean that it's a good idea. And yeah. I think that, uh, the world has paraphrased that and saying mm -hmm. just because it's good doesn't mean you should. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily the same, yep. the same inclination, but I, I think we go back to the, the litmus test of, mm -hmm. uh, God's love letter for us. And right. if it's not scriptural, it doesn't matter what the law says. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate authority. That is where we go back to and we say, it might be legal in this world, but anymore, when I look at the stuff in this world, half the stuff that I'm seeing, you know, 10 years ago, if you would have told me, hey, by the mm -hmm. way, did you know that this, this, and this is going to be going on? I'm like, mm -hmm. nah, no, no, Twilight Zone. Are you kidding right. me? Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So less and less, oh, yeah. uh, as I see the laws, uh, diverging, I guess, from yeah. what is intended from uh, God, mm -hmm. um, I'm far less likely to say, well, it's legal, so it's cool. <laughs> right. Right. There's, uh, yeah, it feels like there's been an, a, there, there's definitely been an agenda going on, and I don't want to get political conspiratory, but it, there definitely has been like this uh, very heavy shift sliding towards a liberal nature, uh, a, a liberal mindset yeah. of this openness, this freedom to explore and, and, you know, go ahead and poke the edges and, hey, let's take three steps outside and see if, like, see if we die. And we're like, right. oh, it didn't kill us right off the bat. I guess we can go another three steps that, you know, whatever. So I think the culture has, 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 has tipped that way, but it doesn't scare me because all of human history has been a rocking back right. and forth and 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 uh you know I, I get especially interested when everybody is thinking like these are new ideas <laughs> no we're just as stupid and as we've not. always been <laughs> they're not new ideas it, you know you can go back and read plato <laughs> and aristotle and all of these ideas are being talked about right. hundreds thousands of years ago so it's not new and yeah. i'm not worried because i i think the most important thing is we have god's love and God's grace dwelling in us. And all that we have is an increased opportunity to share that. Right. Um, I, I think that that's the only thing that we need to worry about is, is the way that I'm going to respond to all of this seeming chaos, um, am I going to respond lovingly? Right. Am I going to respond with grace uh, and, and hold on to truth? Uh, and, and, you know, and how can I share truth lovingly and gracefully? Right. And I think that's what we have to be the most concerned about. Not where is the world right now, because the world is constantly going back and forth and back and forth over the millennia. And what has to stay consistent is are we being loving and being graceful as we seek to share the truth? And we used to use old school words, mm -hmm. paganism and idolatry yeah. are not new not new <laughs> <laughs> so you know and that's yeah. what it goes back to if it's if it's really good for you as an individual yeah and you think it's a really good idea yeah. then you go back to scripture and you say uh, i don't know that that's such a good idea mm -hmm. and even though that you know everything is being you know thought of as as okay if it works for you right. and respecting your rights as an individual mm -hmm. um you know you just take it one step farther and go but mm -hmm. god's not in not, uh, that's not really mm -hmm. where we need to be. Yeah. So, is that the most important thing for right. us to be focused on? Right. Yeah. And that's one of those things, like you said, you don't want to get political, but mm -hmm. as I was, and I don't remember who said it and I, and I wish I could give them credit, but they said, when you take a step into scripture, mm -hmm. you recognize it is always God against the human mm -hmm. governing entity. And yeah. those two things, rarely mm -hmm. come together. And when they do, things flow so smoothly, mm -hmm. but it always comes back because of people's self-interest. They're like, you know what? Like a five-year-old, I don't want to. And the answer yeah. is no. You know, when you start to see that, that, that push against, 
what God wants for us to be mm -hmm. in harmony together and unity yeah. together and community together. The rights of the individual, the mm -hmm. desires of the individual, it just comes back to worship of self. Yep, that's exactly it. I think as Martin Luther said, the human heart is an idol factory. Mm. And we're constantly coming up with ways to, to idolize ourselves. I have not and heard that before. That is so yeah, good. <laughs> it is so good. It was, it was either Luther or Calvin. It was one of those two guys. I can't remember exactly who it was. Eric I'm just having know. a vision of your like factory, like churning yeah. out. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just every day we have to we have to actively go in and shut that thing off. Right. You know, because every day as soon as we wake up, it's going to be whatever I want, whatever I want. Right. You know, especially early in the morning. you got to make a conscious effort to shut that down. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, that was really a big part of what I heard Eric talking about, the, where the law reached me. And I got to hear it twice, because I'm here <laughs> twice. But he talked about people pleasing, and I was like, oh, oh, oh that's me. And uh, I love that he took the time to point out the fact that that's really selfishness, mm -hmm. uh, because I want people to like me. And so how can I please them so that they keep liking me? Mm -hmm. And I'm, a lot of times, not doing what I want to do because I feel like if I do what I want to do, then they're going to be mad at me. Mm. And then I'm going to spend all of my time trying to not make them mad at me, even though, it, and, you know, not necessarily even what I want to do, but what I know is right. right. What I know is the truth. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll lean away from what is like a definite, what I know, like, you know, if, if there's A, B, C, and B is the right choice, but somebody really wants A, I'll give them a little A. And then somebody <laughs> over here wants a little C, he's like, well, you can have a little C. And now I'm like, oh, oh, where'd my B go? You know, <laughs> you know it's, it's very, it, that's a big temptation for me to do. Uh, and I, I'm thankful that Eric pointed out that that's really actually selfishness uh, and not sacrificial love at all. I uh, think that's a... Um and th I'm a very visual person. Yeah. And so for me, there's always the too much of a good thing is not necessarily a good thing. And right. so not that I consider God's word to be, a, I, I won't go with tightrope. I'm going to go with a, a path, right? Okay. You're walking on a narrow path. Mm -hmm. And when you, just when you think that you've gotten to the point where you're like, okay, I'm doing exactly what he wants me to do. Mm -hmm. Then there's that temptation that kind of leads you off of that, that direction. And I think when you do things, with a pure heart and pure intention. And so I too was grateful for that heart mm -hmm. check to just say, okay, when I've done X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. if I couple that with do things in secret, so only my father sees yeah. and do not be the Pharisee on the corner with the, mm -hmm. you know, the big loud noise saying, look, you know, look, look at what I've done. And, mm -hmm. and even one other person recognizing what I've done, mm -hmm. like, I don't want, I don't want that blessing snatched out of heaven. Mm -hmm. I want it to be something that I've done with zero accolades, acknowledgement, mm -hmm. whatever, because I did it for the glory of God. Yep. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> there was, there was one time I was, I was texting with someone and uh, I don't want to say who at all, but um, I just, I, I don't remember what we were texting about exactly, but in there they dropped in like, you just don't know what you've done for me and my family. And I was like, I didn't say this, but I thought it was like, you're right, and I don't want to know. Yeah. I, I really don't want to know because I don't want to think about that I did anything, but yeah. God worked through me to bring about whatever. And my participation in, in that is, only goes as far as God allowed me to do this. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm going to start thinking like, wow, I did that? And, I, and you know, yeah. you know <laughs> I get puffed up so fast and I have to check that. So. Um, yeah, I, I just told them, well, thank you very much. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. Um, and I checked my ego at the door there. But it was, uh, it, it, when you're in ministry, you know, you, you're, and we're all, by the way, in ministry. We are all ministers of God's grace. But when you're like in a specific role of being in the church ministry, um, it, it's really easy to, because uh, it's just your day-to-day -day work. But you just, right. you just want to, you, you want to do and you want to do and you want to know that you're making an impact. But at the same time, you don't want to know that you're, what impact you're making because then you start thinking like, oh, wow, I did that. And no, 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 I didn't do that. God did that. And he right. let me help him do it. You know, so it's a. So true. It's such a fine line of. of uh, so easy to. 
Yeah. <laughs> I also think of like a bowling alley. Yeah. Please put those bumpers in yes. so that I, you know, cannot. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great one. So. That's a great analogy. So, Pam, where was somewhere where you felt the gospel really break through? The, the love of God, God shine through? Two things when he specifically said you're looking for the, the um, and, I, and I think of this in the context of, uh, Pastor Phil has talked a number of times about having a beer. Yeah. He said my family, you know, would have a beer with dinner or mm -hmm. watching a game or whatever. But when my uncle, who was an alcoholic, mm -hmm. came over, none of us drank. Yeah. And um, so when he talked about, you know, just looking out for the weaker person, when he was talking about the, the meat that could be given to you that you could consume because it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. But if it was something that was going to be sacrificed to idols, you recognize that there was a difference between mm -hmm. those things. And to have your behavior reflect what would glorify, glorify God so that you could mm -hmm. speak to others through your actions. I thought that was a really good moment. Mm -hmm. And um, then when he was wrapping it up and saying, you know, spiritual maturity comes when you have demonstrated all of these things in a loving manner. Mm -hmm. And and that I think is a, is a, a big challenge. And it was a great reminder, at least for me, um, when you know the truth, it is hard to not slap somebody with it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and, and mm -hmm. um, just because it's true, and there's scripture in regards to that, that you can share mm -hmm. the truth and love with people. Um, it's hard not to get frustrated mm -hmm. with um, what I, I don't know if I've mentioned in this context before, but you can see when you're speaking truth to somebody and spiritually they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. And I call it this garage door that kind of yeah. comes down and you can yeah. see it in their face that oh, they yeah. don't want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to not continue you know, and so it, my again, my visual is 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 sew up my lips like a scarecrow, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like <laughs> and, and help me stop to not push them away from truth when they get to that point where they can't handle anymore mm -hmm. and they don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. And and so when he talked about that, um, that move of into spiritual maturity of love. Yes. I thought, you know what? Let it let the words stop and let the actions pick up from there mm -hmm. so that they continue to walk at their own pace. Right. And, and the, the thought that I had yesterday, I don't know, yesterday afternoon, probably two or three in the afternoon as I'm driving, as I'm thinking to myself, I will never judge you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm making a conscious effort to never judge you or anybody else as to where you are on that path, because right. no matter who you are and how much you've read and how much you know and what kind of a home you've been raised in and how much you go to church, mm -hmm. that relationship with Jesus is yours, is yours. and yeah. yours alone and it's intensely personal. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to just love you up the best I can, right. to you know be on the journey together, but never in any way to, um, <clears throat> again, fire hose to the face. I don't mm -hmm. want to take the gospel and be like, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, That's, you need yeah, this. Yeah, right. You need this. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to slap people with you it? You You know. <laughs> you do, because it's just, it seems, because the Holy Spirit has slowly opened us up over time, where we're at now just seems so obvious. Yeah. But we forget that it took us, for myself, 36 years to get here. Right. Um, for any number of people, 40, 50, 60 years, whatever, you know, like our, it, that God has worked on all of us at His pace because it's in his time that he makes all things beautiful. And so we just have to be willing to let God take his time, but be ready to move when the Spirit says move. And, yep. and so, yeah, I agree that when you see that wall just coming down, you know, like, okay, now's not the time. Yep. So lovingly finish up what you're saying and, and move on. Yep. But yeah, I, that's beautiful. And you want to save people. You do. You want to save them with those words. Yes. Not you personally, but you want to share that good news mm -hmm. so desperately. And, and that was something mm -hmm. else that resonated with me yesterday as I thought, I need to think on all the things that are good and lovely. Yes. And I need to share hope. Mm -hmm. Because the world is really good about not sharing hope with people. Yeah. And so if I'm speaking on those things mm -hmm. that... Um, our love, you know, that spiritual maturity that is love and all of those things and mm -hmm. all of my actions. 
and um, you know, if you come to me with the latest thing that's going on with the whatever, yeah. and I come back to you and I say, I'm not made for a spirit of fear, but of power and love, love and sound mind. Yeah. So take a breather. You know, mm -hmm. we're good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> God's got this. Yeah. Yep. yep. We can do our part, but God's, God's got this. Yep. So beautiful. So Pam, how do you feel like this message this last week is going to impact your your next week? What's what's something that you are going to to do differently this next week in light of what you've learned this week? Um, probably the his his final uh, at least the final thought that really resonated with me mm -hmm. is. Um, to just try to move into that spiritual maturity mm -hmm. of um, receiving that and saying, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to walk this out in, in everything. I'm going to walk everything out in a loving, in a loving manner, mm -hmm. in a patient manner, but also an honest manner. Because yeah. I have the tendency, because I'm a people pleaser as well, not so mm -hmm. much in my actions, but I, a lot of times, will not say something because I don't want... I don't want the backlash. Right. And so I, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a kind person, yep. but I, I don't I avoid conflict. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. Yeah. Um, That's Mike, our groundskeeper. Yeah. <laughs> Trimming up the lawn. But Thanks, I am going to have good conversations in love, mm -hmm. and just say, you know, even even if you were to say something like, you know, I don't love your shirt, I would say, you know what, that wasn't so kind. But okay. Yeah. You know, you're not your taste, my taste. You do you, I'll do me. You know, those right. types of things where that's my challenge this week yeah. is to have honest, loving conversations. Yeah. So. Yeah. My challenge for myself is to, uh, to lovingly set boundaries for myself. Mm. Um, and that was something I did on Sunday. Um, we got a roof project going on at home. And uh, I went home I, at this huge pressure in my head to like, oh, I got a home and I got to work. I got to do all the stuff that I've set out to do. Um, but as I got home, one, it was, it was too hot. <laughs> and so <laughs> I allowed myself to not work on it right then, but to actually go back downstairs and uh, work on something for, for Becky to do some house stuff that she was away to birthday party. I wanted her to be able to come home and actually rest. Awesome. So I went back inside and, you know, did some dishes, swept the floor, put away laundry, just did some things that she sees clutter and she can't rest. And so I was like, how can I make this a place of rest for her? So that's, I already took it to heart yesterday of like, okay, quit doing the me thing and lovingly look out for someone else. So I, I'm going to try to continue that, uh, hopefully forever, but I'm going to, I'm especially going <laughs> to be focusing on that this week of, okay, how can I, uh, set my boundaries? For myself and for my family. That love I serve is a verb. Them. Love is a verb. Yeah. And how can I serve them first? So That's awesome. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Pam, so much for joining us. And thank you, you, New Life. Nick, thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> New Life family for joining us today for Sunday Leftovers. I hope you have a blessed week. And don't forget, October 1st, if you want to be a part of helping us finish up, uh, work more on this building here. Uh, and there are many other ministries, opportunities starting up as our fall season gets underway. Uh, call the office, get plugged into a life group or a ministry team somewhere. You will not regret it. Uh, I hope to see you next Sunday and have a blessed week.